Hello, love. Welcome to the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. It's me. I hope all is well with you. I know you all are probably preparing for Thanksgiving, which is quickly approaching. It's time for the turkey, the ham, the greens, the yams, the baked mac and cheese, etc. But more importantly, it's time to reflect on what we have to be thankful for. These past two years with this pandemic, everyone has been affected either directly or indirectly some type of way. And we still have it going on. They're doing these vaccine shots and everything. But we have come through a nice little stench as a people. So as we look around to see who's left and what's left, we have these people and these things to be grateful for. And you know, this is also a time to reflect on the love and the joy that our deceased loved ones brought into our lives. A lot of times during the holidays, people are depressed, severely depressed. A lot of people don't even celebrate the holidays anymore. When I was younger, I loved the holidays. You could just feel the holiday spirit in the atmosphere. And it's like these days, it's not as warm. So a lot of times when we lose loved ones, for example, if the holidays was always at grandmama's house and then grandmama passed. And yeah, other people in the family might pick up, but it don't always be the same as when grandmama was doing it. Cause grandmama nine times out of 10 was able to bring all of the family together up under one roof. A lot of times after grandmama passed, family starts to split up and do their own thing. A lot of times after grandmama passed, because she plays such an important role during these times, a lot of people don't even want to celebrate the holidays anymore. And it's a very hurtful thing. And it's something that if you ask a lot of people, they say it's a pain that's a lifetime. So, I understand. But if you know about life and you know about energy, then you know that we are energy in the flesh. And energy never dies. It just relocates. It relocates. It just loses its flesh. And a lot of times, people are so hurt and so tormented by that loss that they are not able to see the signs and symbols that their loved ones leave to let them know that they're okay and that they're still here with us. So I'll give you some examples. If you hear the person's name or you're watching TV and there's a character with the person's name, you're reading the person's name is up in there. You know, if you see somebody that resembles the person that you lost. I remember one time, because my father passed uh, today, uh, November 23rd. It was crazy. Like, I didn't even remember the exact day. I just remember it was right before Thanksgiving. My brain wouldn't even let me remember the exact day that my, doc- my father passed. But uh, Facebook reminded me today. So, yeah, November 23rd. Um... And I remember just, you know, seeing the signs and symbols and stuff and things that was just telling me with, with, with my knowledge that I have spiritually, just telling me like, you know, that he was still around. But we're gonna talk more about my dad uh, later in this segment. <clears throat> so, you know, there may be uh, familiar smells. And I remember what I was gonna say about that. Um, if you see somebody in their likeness, It was this man who looked just like my daddy. And he was like in a, it was like a crowd or whatever. And I'm like double, triple looking. And it's like he moving and this man looking. I'm like, this man look like height, size, everything. (laughs) And I later told my mom and she was like, that's him. He, He letting you know, you know what I'm saying? That he's still around. 
uh, yeah, but let's let's continue. If you sense familiar smells, a lot of times people wore, you know, certain fragrances that they, you know, made their own. And so you may get a whiff of that smell out of nowhere. That's another sign. Um, unfortunately, the dead is cold. So a lot of times people will feel a an unnatural coldness. And a lot of times people think it's like demonic length, but a lot of times it's not. You can you're actually feeling their presence. Some people can actually feel when their loved ones, you know, touch them or can feel uh the weight in their bed shift as like somebody sitting on the edge of their bed. Or you may have dreams about this person. But there are many signs that we are given to let us know that all is well. To let us know that they are still here with us. You know, so, um, like I said, the torment, it blocks the communication channels. And you have to get yourself to a point of peace and understanding a point of releasing and healing from that pain so that your channels are allowed to open up and you'll be able to correspond back and forth. My, I, you know, you hear about things coming up, but if you're not experiencing them, then, you know, it's kind of like either you just don't believe that it's true or it's kind of like up in the air. And I remember, you know, hearing things about it you know, about life and how, you know, energy doesn't die and people go on and, you know, people communicating back and forth. Um, but I never had a, like, very impactful death until my grandmother. And, my God, like, I needed to get my little self together because my grandmama is my favorite girl. That's how I know love. Like, she played a huge part in raising me. That's my favorite girl. Like, I was mad at her. Like, you done left me down here with these people. I was too, <laughs> I was too hurt. I was too hurt. But that, that hurt was blinding. And I came across a book by one of the little popes or whatever. But they had like a little Christmas decorative cover. And, um... It actually was about, you know, his plight with cancer and his ability to still help others, you know, even though he himself is tormented and going through what he's going through and um, his realization with death and with life and gaining peace uh, with that. And so that book was like very, very helpful in helping me to heal and to understand. Um, and as I started to get peace, you know, it was, you know, you can, you can still feel her presence. You still know that she's around. Anytime I hear Lorraine, you know, I know my grandma. That's my grandma. So, um, this, it'd be a lot of signs and symbols that a lot of people miss because of the pain. The pain blocks them from being able to see it, from being able to, uh, hear it, from being able to feel it. And I'm not saying that once you gain this understanding, once you gain this level of peace that you won't um, miss these people or even feel the pain of their absences sometimes. And you, you know, you will, it's natural. You miss their physical flesh. So, um, but you won't be as distraught as someone who does not have the knowledge to tap in and to be able to course, correspond and to understand. Um, also, you know, most spiritual people, most spiritualists will be able to understand a lot of what I'm saying. And just a little sad note, because a lot of people say that spirituality is, you know, the work of Satan. And no, it's not. It can be. But so can the Bible. 
It's blessings and curses in the Bible. It's, you know what I'm saying? Above and below everywhere. So it's all about the way that you tap in and use, use things. Um, but I digress. So as my daddy used to say, in the meantime, in between time, you know, while you're going through the process of healing from death, celebrate life. Learn to celebrate life. Learn to reconnect with nature. Acknowledge those who are still around you. A lot of times, death is supposed to make us see who else is still around and reevaluate those relationships and see if we need to fix some things or to get close to or, you know, whatever it is that needs to be done. You know, who do you still have around you that loves you? Think about that. And that might be a hard question for some people to answer because you can always point out who you love, but to sincerely be able to point out others to say that this person loves me, the count might not be as many. But I'm going to tell you something, as Patty LaBelle saying, somebody loves you, baby. And if they don't, we do on the Shia Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Now, for those who know love, be grateful. A lot of people take love for granted. There are so many people walking this earth that cannot testify to love. Love is the most powerful frequency there is. For love is Mama Did God. And we do have the capacity to know, to be loved to ourselves and to others. We have family, we have friends. And a lot of times, friends become family. And the fact that someone chooses not to just love you, but to keep loving you. See, a lot of times, family loves you out of obligation. But somebody that's not blood is choosing to love you. And a lot of people take that for granted. And that's definitely something to be thankful for. You know, and the people around you, People have a hard time helping the, their selves these days, okay? So they may not be able to help you exactly in the way that you need. But the fact that they choose to be there, they check in, they show you support, they, they give you hugs, that stuff is worth being noted. My grandmama said, you ain't got to do nothing but stay black and die. And then Mama did God said, for you to love. So anything that a person does for you, they're doing out of their own choice and their own resources. And you be thankful for that because they could have gave that time, they could have gave that resource to somebody else. My grandmama taught me that, was taught us that when we was little. You know, and a lot of people take advantage of that. You know, and what will make it just so whole is if you're the type of person to be there for these people in your life that's there for you back in some type of way. You know, everybody has their ways of being there. You might have some people that you talk to all day, every day, see them all the time. You might have some people that you see once in a while, um... You know, however it go, but it's still a love vibe there. The person is still taking their time to come through and see about you or to pick up the phone and check on you or to even go into the spirit. A lot of times you may not be hearing from a person, but in the spirit world, they're helping to protect you. They're praying from you for you. They're declaring on your behalf. So that's definitely something to be noted and something that I think that we as a people need to take more seriously. You know, and life goes on and we all have, you know, are swept up by lives. Lives that we're in, lives that we're creating. So you might not get a chance to kick it like you used to back up in the day. But when one calls on the other and vice versa, you know, that's a positive support network right there. And like I said, even if you don't see one another often, keep the vibe of love when you do see one another. 
As my daddy used to say, it's always a treat when players meet. You did? Keep the vibe love. Don't approach people, hey stranger, you don't call nobody no more. Is this, is that how you like choose to use your time that you have with that person? Keep it love. And sometimes, a lot of times, we will express just ungratefulness for what we have, for our circumstances, for who we with, you know, because we're looking for something greater. And that's fine to want more, to want better. But to be grateful for what you have now, that's part of the key that opens up the door for the life that you seek. You know, when you complain about your apartment because you want a house, think about the homeless family. When you complain about the type of income you have, think of those with no money. Girl, when you complaining about your badass kids, think about the one, women who can't have babies. Think about the mothers whose time with their children were shortened due to gun violence or poor health or whatever the case may have been. When you complain about the type of car you have, think about all them people you done passed on the bus stops, especially when it was cold. When you complain about those that love you enough to push you. When you complain about those who love you enough to tell you when you're wrong. Think about those who have nobody to believe in them. Think about those who are only surrounded by those who are leading them down the wrong path. And what their future is going to look like. Wish I love we always talk about character. And how we treat each other. And how we treat each other. Think about what you do have and then work with what you got to get what you want i know that sounds familiar from players club but it's truth because gratitude opens doors and the spirit knows whether you are sincere or not gratitude is not simply saying thank you but caring for being efficient with restoring of and elevating with whatever it is that you're blessed with and despise not small beginnings. Now, since I referenced my daddy a couple times and told y'all I was going to talk to y'all about him, um, <clears throat> I wanted to just share a little bit with y'all because my daddy, uh, that was a unique man, Roger Lewis Hogan Jr. That, that was a unique man. And in his words, I didn't raise you, but he raised me more than he realized. And when I was little, I was a daddy's girl, period. Okay? I love that man so much that I used to get my mama the flux. He would come around, and he had vanished, and became a pattern. Um, and it was like he was slipping through my fingers, but he never stayed gone, you know. So needless to say, I saw my daddy in the men that I later loved. And when my daddy died, I ended up, like, losing my man. Like, the hurt was, like... Oh my God. Um, and it was like kind of crazy because of two things. One, I did not think because of the type of relationship that we had to where he, like he said, he didn't raise me or whatever. Um, and I loved him so much. And then it, that I still loved him, but it was like a little resentment and a little numbness that was starting to form. Um, so I didn't think that when he died that it would bother me um, as much as it did. So, and then not only that, my dad has spoke this whole radio, TV, movies, modeling thing into my life, like since I was little. I wanted to be the Chief Supreme Court Justice. And he was like, you have the brain for it, but you're supposed to be on the big screen. You're supposed to be behind the mic. You're supposed to be on the runway. I used to be like, okay, daddy, but I ain't never, you know, I, I heard it, but you know. I heard him, but I didn't hear him. So, uh, at this particular time... I had Shy Love going and I was doing my first Shy Love concert. And his grandchildren were going to be performing. And when I had them, he said the same thing about them. So um, I had planned on surprising him and placing him in the front row. So the same day that I got uh, the approval for the spot for my show um, was the same day that I found out that my daddy died. That pain hit me so bad. Like, I, I just like... I just felt like I needed my daddy, like. So, I remember making sure that the kids was okay and telling them, like, I got to go be with my daddy. 
and um i can't remember if i had like cab money or whatever uber went out then but it's like i couldn't wait and at the time i was living in a south shore area and my daddy lived out west i was screaming and crying down the street you hear me my feet could not stop moving uh, my sister and my auntie caught up with me by the expressway um so i ended up like laying him i ended up being the one to lay him to rest and you know do his little put his services and everything together um and it was unorthodox it was an unorthodox service because my daddy was an unorthodox man but he loved god and he loved hard and i learned so much more about him um about this man that they call hogan through his belongings and stuff and you know just remembering things that he told me conversations we had even arguments you know and he was misunderstood in a lot of ways he could see like what others could not see and people doubted him and then you start to see it manifest in the world and it's like damn we was we was the one slow you know <laughs> he, he saw what we couldn't see um but never nevertheless my daddy was the type of man who was who he was and that was the bottom line you know he didn't walk with malice in his heart but he definitely was the creator of his own justice he was a general and he moved like it um so through a series a serious process of processing and healing plus my knowledge of the spirit world i started seeing people and things that reminded me of him and you know that was him letting me know that he was good and he's still with me and he is and i really don't see why people say rest in peace because they don't be resting they become a part of our ascended uh ancestors and they are you know guiding us protecting us oh just so much and i always could say that i love my daddy and he used to tell me he loved me and it's like yeah i hear you or whatever but it wasn't like too many people that i could say like this person loves me and I'd be like, I love my daddy, and my daddy love me. All he'd do is, you know, lose his flesh. And people be like, man, that's crazy. And it's like, <laughs> it's truth, though. You know, sometimes your flesh gets, it gets in your own way. You know, your spirit is right there and ready and willing, but that flesh ain't trying to play fair. So all my daddy needed was his little freedom. You know, he left me with some things that, you know, like I said, he raised me. I think more than he realized. He had more of an impact on me more than I realized at the time. Um, I was the first female that he ever opened the car door for. We were going out on a date, our first little date, and he was going to get in a car and I'm like, excuse me? And he chuckled and came around the car and he like, oh yeah, you one of those. And he told me I was the first female he had ever opened the car for and probably be the last. <laughs> so, and um, he told me my type deserves that. And the thing about my daddy was that if I was out here on some thought-ish, he would have told me flat out and would have, you know what I'm talking about, groomed me for the track, like, period. So as he grew and reconditioned himself, he would update me on whatever knowledge he previously parted. For example, when I was little, he come back at the bedtime and talk my grandma into letting him tell us a bedtime story. So he'll tell us, instead of telling us, he'll start it off like the fairy tale way, but then he'll start telling us about his street days in detail and basically like saying kill, kill ops. Um, now, meanwhile, I wore a rosary. I attended Catholic school, Catholic church, and we was advanced against that. So I was a little confused. Um, but majority of my time was with my, my mom's side of the family, so they kept me, you know, away from that side. Um, but as I became a young adult and started getting out here into the world and seeing how people be on bullshit, like, just for nothing, um, I actually started to understand why people kill. And one night, um, and also, I had to learn to like I don't I don't like fighting I just want to love like that's how I always been but I had to learn to defend myself and that started to create like a little you know Chucky doll or whatever uh but anyway so one night I was coming out of my door with this pretty ass thick sharp ass machete that oh she was so pretty Ooh. anyway so at this point 
I didn't give a damn or a fuck, okay? I still don't give a fuck. I just give a damn. That's the difference. But I was super calm. I'm coming out my door. My daddy is having to walk up the stairs as I'm coming out the door with my machete. So we both like standing out of eye. He looking at me and I'm looking at him. We standing out of eye. And my daddy said, God is always on time. He said, go in the house. I'm like, fine. And I go back in the house. So he tells me that I'm ready and he sees it in my eyes. So I asked my daddy, like, you know, what, what you talking about? He said, murder. So I pleaded my justified case. My daddy told me it takes a stronger person not to kill than to kill. Of course, like I told y'all, he the one who planted that seed in me. So of course I threw his teachings back in, in his face. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he told me, when I was a babe, I drank milk. Now that I'm a man, I eat meat. You did. I dug. He saved me, you know what I'm saying? A combination of him and mama did God. Goodness gracious. But it was like after he died, all the stuff that he was um, speaking into my life, the doors started to open. And it was like out of nowhere. This was not something that I was heading. Like before I wanted to become a chief Supreme Court judge, I wanted to be like a little movie star, rock star. Then my family said they weren't serious or whatever. So I went from that to the Chief Supreme Court Justice. Like, what could be more serious than that? Plus, I love justice. Um, but my dad, no matter what they used to say, he always spoke this part of my life. And it's like everything just opened up. So pay attention to when your loved ones are ascending in the type of things, doors that's opening, the type of things that's happening in your life. You know, um, I realized that uh, him and my mom was right about our similarities. He used to tell me, like, you got you more like me than you realize. And I'm like, nah. But I am the type of person who I am who I am. And that is the bottom line. I am Hogan's daughter. He, too, had many hats. As you see, Shy Love is into some of everything. And he wasn't bad looking either. Some of my, some of the sex you see come from my daddy. And if you told him he was ugly, he'll laugh in your face. The ladies loves him and he loved the ladies. <laughs> and he loved them all. At his funeral service, uh, he had his ex-wife, that was my mama, his current wife, uh, some baby mama representatives. And I let them know he loved them all. My daddy used to write poetry and stuff. He loved them all. He'll tell you, like, I'm a lover, not a fighter. But don't push him, you know what I'm saying? So, as he loved them all, we love you all on the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Blessings on your Thanksgiving. Hugs. Love.